This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how to create this vector camera lens uh, as you see here on this thumbnail mock-up I created. And at any point in this tutorial you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So I'll minimize this and we'll get started in Inkscape. The first thing we will do is make sure our view is set at custom and then we'll zoom in at one to one so we're in at 100%. Then we'll open up our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that drop-down. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu. And the first thing we're going to do is create a circle. So let's click on the Circle and Ellipses tool. And let's hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a, perfect, a perfectly round circle. Like that. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this circle about 60% gray. If you hover your cursor over the colors down here, down the, over the gray scales, it'll show you which percentage. We're gonna, we're gonna make this 60% gray, and then we're gonna give this a linear gradient by clicking on this button right here. And then what we're gonna do is, once you do that, you're gonna have these two handles show up. So let's click on this part of that, this handle right here, and let's make the color here. We're gonna use a, the HSL tab. We're gonna take the opacity, bring it all the way up, and we're going to come over to the L column and bring it all the way to the left to make that black. And then we're going to go back to the Select tool. And let's click on this one more time to get our rotation handles. And then hold Control on the keyboard and just click and drag this around so that the gradient's going sort of at a diagonal. Maybe like that. And then what we could do is we could right click this and go to Duplicate. And then we're going to flip that vertically and horizontally. And let's click this again to get back to our scaling handles. And then hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and just scale this in a little bit. Maybe about that much. And what we're going to do next is let's click and drag over this whole thing, over both of them. And let's right click it and go to Duplicate. And then we'll hold Control and Shift and scale these ones down to about here. Maybe about that far. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's grab just this one right here, this the center one, and hold Control and Shift and scale that one in just a little bit. Maybe about that much. And then we could hold Shift and click on the circle behind us so we have both of those selected. We'll right click that and go to Duplicate. Hold Control and Shift and scale this in about this much. And then from there, we'll right click that and go to Duplicate, hold Control and Shift and scale this one in just a little bit. And then we'll do that one more time. We'll right click, go to Duplicate, hold Control and Shift and scale that in just a little bit, maybe about the same amount. Um, maybe about that much. And then we can click off of the graphic and deselect everything. Now let's take this circle here in the middle and let's right click that and go to Duplicate. And we'll flip that vertically and horizontally. And then hold Control and Shift and scale this into about here. Maybe about that much. And then we'll right click that and go to Duplicate. We'll turn that one black. Hold Control and Shift and scale that one down about this much. And then finally we could right click that, duplicate it one more time. We'll turn that one white and we'll bring the opacity down a lot, maybe about maybe about 55 uh, 55 percent opacity, and then we could hold control and sh control and shift and scale this one in about that far, like that. Okay, so now let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything, and let's click on this circle right here, this outer one, and we're going to duplicate that. We're going to just going to go to uh, edit, duplicate, and let's just put this over here and let's work with this for now. I'm going to press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse to pan the page over like that. And I'm going to turn this black and I'm going to click this third button in up here that says uh, radial gradient. I'm going to give that a radial gradient. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on edit. I'm going to edit the gradient. I'm going to go to the drop down, click on the second one, and I'm going to go to the A column under the HSL tab and bring that all the way to the right. And if you click this drop down up here, you'll see we have two stops and they're both black. We're going to add one more stop in there. I'm just going to click this button that says add stop. Click that once and now there's three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this, um, this center one right here. And I'm going to come down to the A column. I'm going to bring that about in half. 
maybe a little less than half. And then I'll go, I'll, I'll go back to the drop down and I'll go to the top stop and I'll take the A column and bring that all the way to the left. And we can close out of that. And then let's take this and hold shift on the keyboard and click on one of these circles here. And let's center that on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. I'm just gonna pan back over and we click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on just this circle we just made, this one right here, it should be on top. And I'm just gonna hold control and shift and I'm just gonna scale it out just a little bit so it over, it goes, it's just so it's a little bit bigger than the circles beneath it. And I'm actually gonna to go to the gradient tool. This, the gradient tool is right here, but if you're using a laptop, this won't be on your screen. So you can just press G on the keyboard to get the gradient tool. And these stops will show up. And I'm gonna take this middle stop and I'm gonna bring that out about that much. And I'll hold control and shift, scale that in a little bit. And that's pretty good like that. So let's go back to the select tool. And let's right click the circle and go to duplicate. And then let's push this off to the side and let's work with that some more. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this one blue. I'm gonna come down to the color picker. I'm gonna pick a shade of blue like that. Maybe a little, uh, maybe a different shade. Yeah, we'll go with something like that. And I'm going to give this a radial gradient as well. Click on this button that says radial gradient. And then we'll go back to our gradient tool. Again, it's right here, or you could just press G on the keyboard. And I'm going to grab this stop, and I'm just going to move this up so it's at the top of the circle like that. Maybe a little outside of the circle. Then I'll hold Control and Shift, and I'll just grab these handles and scale that out a little bit. And then we go back to our select tool. Let's right click this and go to duplicate. And let's, um, let's make this one a shade of purple. I'm gonna go with purple over here. And we're gonna give this a radial gradient as well. Let's click on that. And let's go back to our gradient tool. We can just press G on the keyboard. And I'm gonna take this one, hold control, and just click and drag it down, straight down. So it's a little bit outside of that circle right there. Hold Control and Shift and pull these handles out a little bit. That should be pretty good. Uh, I should bring that down a little more. That should be good. Now let's go back to the Select tool and let's click and drag over both of those. And let's group them together with this button up here. Group Selected Objects. And then we'll click on it a second time to get our rotation handles. And I'm going to hold Control and click and drag one of these corners around until this is going diagonal like that. And once we have that set, we could hold Shift and click on this circle and center that on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then let's click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna click on this, this circle up top here that we just created and I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and scale that in just a little bit. Just so there's a little bit of black on the inside there of the outside of that circle like that. And that should be pretty good. We can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And one of the last things we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of a, a light reflection over the lens here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the um, Create Squares and Rectangles tool. I'm going to hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and just click and drag to create a perfect square like that. And I'll go back to the Select tool. I'll click this a second time to get the rotation handles. And I'll hold Control and I'll scale this around until the corners are going upright. And then what I can do is I'm just going to put this over this circle right here where the corner is touching about in the middle like that. I'll click this again to get back to our scaling handles and I'm going to grab this top arrow and just pull that out until these corners exceed the, um, the entire graphic right there. We don't want those corners going in, the, in there like that. We just want this thing going all the way out just to be safe. And then we can click this again to get back to our rotation handles and once you do that there should be a little crosshair in the center. What we could do is we could take that crosshair, hold control, and click and drag that down to the bottom corner there until it kind of just snaps right in like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this corner and I'm just going to rotate this around. Maybe like that. I'll put this over here. Um, you know what? I'm going to undo that. Let me just undo. Whoops, wrong button. Um, I just hit control and Z to do undo. I don't know exactly where the button is. I just used the keyboard shortcut. But um, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to right click this and duplicate it. And I'm just going to turn this. I'm just going to turn this red. 
I'll click this again to get back to the scaling handles. And I'm just going to grab one of these side arrows and just bring this in like that. Maybe about that much. Then once you've done that, you could hold shift and click on the purple shape. And then we could center that up on the vertical axis. Click off of the graphic, deselect everything. And now let's click on just this red shape. And then click it another time to get the rotation handles. And I'm going to grab this corner and just bring this around until it's uh, a little bit spaced out from the purple shape, maybe about that much. And then what I will do is uh, I'll hold shift and click on the purple shape and I'll unify them together by going to path union. And what we could do now is once you've done that, let's grab this crosshair and put it down at the corner over here. And I'm just going to rotate this around until it's about in this position right here. And then I'm going to turn that white. So what I'll do now is I'll go back to the uh, Create Circles and Ellipses tool. I'll bring the cursor over the graphic here and just hold Control and Shift to create a circle like that. A little small circle. Go back to the Select tool, hold Shift, click on this circle here, and let's align those on the vertical and horizontal axis. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And then I'm going to click on just this circle right here. I'm going to hold Control and Shift and bring it out about that much just a little bit inwards of that blue coloration right there a little bit leave a little bit of padding in there like that and then I'm going to right click this circle and go to duplicate hold shift click on these white shapes we just created and played around with and we'll go to path intersection and then I'm going to click on this white circle I'll hold control and shift I'll scale this down about this much maybe about yeah about that much and I'm just gonna make sure this is raised to the top raise selection to the top and then hold shift and click on that white shape and go to path difference and what we're gonna do now is let's take the opacity and bring that all the way up and we'll give that a linear gradient with this tool right here and then we'll go back to our gradient tool we'll just press G on the keyboard to get the rate the uh, get these handles here I'm gonna put the white side out about here and I'm going to take the transparent side I'm going to put that in about right here maybe about that much let me go back to the select tool and let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100 percent and see how that looks I'd say that's pretty good um, yeah that's pretty good so what we're going to do now is we're going to create another circle let's go back to the circles and ellipses tool just hold control and shift click and drag to create a circle like that and then we'll go back to the select tool and let's hold shift and click on this circle down here and let's align that on the vertical and horizontal axis and then click off of the graphic to deselect everything and then we'll take just this um, just this circle right here I'm gonna hold control and shift and scale this out about this much and then I'm gonna take this top arrow up here and hold control and scale this down to about here and I'll take this arrow, hold control, scale that into about here. You want, you want this circle to be on the inside of this purple shape here. You don't want it like out here. And if you want to zoom in, you could hold control on your keyboard and roll up and down on the mouse wheel, or you just press plus and minus on the keyboard. That'll also zoom you in and out. So once you've done that, I'm going to zoom back out to 100%. Once you have that circle about that shape and that size and that position, we're going to give this a radial gradient as well. And then what we could do is, let's just bring the opacity down a little bit. Maybe about that much. Let's go back to the gradient tool by pressing G. And let's hold Control and Shift and grab this handle right here. And let's just pull that out a little bit so we can see the edge of that circle like that. Let me go back to the Select tool. And then I'm going to right click on that circle and go to Duplicate. And hold Control on the keyboard and just scale this in. Scale that down about that much. I'm going to hold control and roll up on the mouse wheel just to see where it's positioned. I want to put this out here a little bit, maybe like that. I'm going to bring the opacity up a little bit. And then I'll just press 1 on the keyboard to zoom out and see how that looks. All right, let's say that's pretty good. So what, we'll, what we could do now is let's just put a little bit of an outline around this uh, camera lens. Let's click on this largest circle here in the back and then right click it and go to duplicate. And let's make this a very light shade of gray, maybe uh, 20%. And then let's send that to the bottom by clicking this button here, lower selection to the bottom. And we'll hold control and shift and grab one of these arrows and just scale this out about that much. 
And then I'm going to give that a linear gradient with this button here. Let's go back to our gradient tool, press G on the keyboard, click on the, uh, this gradient right here, the transparent one. And let's come back, let's uh, take the opacity and bring that all the way up. And let's come up to the L column and bring that all the way to the right to make that white. And then I'm going to take that handle, I'm going to put it up here towards the top. Then I'm going to take this handle and put it down here towards the bottom. I'm just going to hold control, bring that down to the bottom. And then we go back to our select tool. And then let's go to edit, duplicate. And then let's flip that vertically with this button right here. And then send that to the bottom. And then hold control and shift on the keyboard and grab one of these arrows and just scale it up until it's about at a good size, maybe, uh, yeah, I'd say that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna hold shift and click on the other circle. I'm just gonna scale those in a little bit. I'll scale that one, a little. I don't want it too thick, you know, you want it uh, maybe about that size, that's pretty good. So I think one last final step, let's click on the very biggest circle in the background there, if we can. Let's duplicate that, edit, duplicate, Turn that black, and let's send that to the bottom, and then just press down on the arrow keys. So just so it's down about that much, and then we can take the opacity and drop it down, just to give it a little bit of a little bit of a drop shadow. And that's pretty much it. That's how you can create a vector style camera lens using Inkscape. Let me uh, group all of this together and shrink it down so you can show you. It looks kind of um, I don't think it looks too great up at this size, but if you scale it down. You can see it looks pretty good. It actually looks like a camera lens. So uh, well, I think so anyway. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.